Um, my name's Kiva. I'm a third year data science student here at DCU. And I'm going to be presenting today for roughly about 20 minutes. If anyone has any questions kind of throughout the presentation, just stick it into the chat and we'll get to it at the end. This will be about, yeah, about 20 minutes and hopefully you'll learn something new. Today I'm also going to be presenting uh, with my fellow ambassador, Shane, who's a second year computer science student. So here's just a quick little agenda of what we'll be talking about today. So a little introduction there. Uh, we're going to be talking about computer science, computing for business and data science. Basically, we'll just have a quick run through of the modules uh, that are on offer, the timetables, the career prospects, and the intro and Erasmus opportunities, and then any questions you have at the end. Um, so Shane, if you'd like to have a start there and talk about computer science. Yeah, perfect. So um, I'm a second year computer science uh, student, as Kareva said. Um, uh, we have we were used to be called uh, computer applications with software engineering, um, but that's been changed. And now in next year, um, it'll be fully computer science. Uh, the course code is DC one two one, and that can be used for your CAO. It's an undergraduate degree, and it takes four years full time. And at the end of it, you're left with a level eight honors degree. Um, we're based in Glasnevin campus, um, and as far as I know, there's no one who ends up getting sent off of Glasnevin campus. So this is primarily where we are. Um, the requirements to get in, um, which are uh, 498 uh, points. Uh, you need a minimum of an L4 or H6 in maths. And then you need to do six six subjects um, and pass them all. You need English or Irish, uh, maths, and then two out of six need to be um, a grade H5 or higher. Um, obviously, the points subject to change as soon as results come out and stuff like that, but it shouldn't fluctuate too much. Um, in year one, we've the core modules and all there. Uh, computer systems, which uh, is an introduction basically into how a computer works on a really basic level. And it kind of goes in depth on how information is transferred and stuff like that. Uh, web design, which is about creating websites. Uh, programming, which is learning how to program. Problem solving, creativity, and critical thinking, which teaches you a different way to approach problems and how to break things down. Um, and then you have IT mathematics one and two, which is uh, continuous for the, the whole year. And um, second semester, you have digital innovation, management, and enterprise, computer programming two, networks and internet, and introduction to operating systems. Um, and then year two, we have systems analysis, introduction to databases, probability and statistics, computer programming three, Introduction to DevOps and systems programming. As far as DevOps goes, as a lot of people might not know, um, DevOps is essentially the process of developing an app or a program or some computer uh, program. And that teaches you kind of how to get into it and how to work with other people as well. And then semester two, which is where we are now. These are the modules I currently have. Um, which is logic, operating systems, software testing, computer programming for full stack development and linear algebra. Um, in year three, yeah, in semester one, you have the option to go broad, uh, which is under the Erasmus program, which we'll touch more on later on. And then um, you have, if you don't do Erasmus, you have computer networks too, um, analysis and design. Uh, well, OO analysis and design, which stands for object object oriented, which is um, a concept in programming, which you learn more about in your first year. A uh, advanced algorithms and AI search, uh, computability and complexity, um, comparative programming languages, user interface design and implementation, and then once you go into the uh, second semester, you have the communication skills and IT ar architecture modules. And you also have um, a third year project, which again, touch more on later. And then finally, the big part of third year, which is integrated training, known as Intra, which is a six month paid work placement. Uh, this is how the timetable currently looks for first years. As you can see, uh, quite full on, it is a full time degree. Um, but you do get plenty of breaks and the workload isn't as overwhelming as it looks there. And then this is fourth years um, currently. As you can see, the number of lectures goes down significantly. And that's because you also have a fourth year project to work on, which we will talk about later. 
and it's far less of an intensive schedule but um i wouldn't get too relaxed because it's just as much work and um, that's as far as um when you come out of your degree and um, there's a multitude of options you can essentially go into absolutely anything to do with computers and um, if you like cyber security you have quality assurance you have cloud you have integration data science which uh, data scientist and then risk consultant game developer mobile app developer uh, police officer and the guard the guard you do quite like to, to hire graduates um, from computing courses because obviously online crime is a growing thing uh, fraud analyst uh, front-end developer which is websites and stuff like that so a multitude of options now we're just going to talk a little bit about DC120, which is computing for business. So again, it's pretty similar with a similar background and requirements. And um, course code there is DC120. It's a four year uh, degree as before. Uh, again, it's full time. You come out with a level eight honors and it's based on the class seven campus. And the minimum points was 414, which is again, subject to, subject to change once the results are ready to start come out. Again, there's a minimum of an 04 or a H6 in max. And then DCU requirements are going to be the same across every DCU course. So it's the minimum of six subjects with a grade 06 or H7. And it must include English or Irish and maths. And then two out of the six should have a grade H5. So in year one, there's a lot of overlap with um, both data science and computer science. So you have web design, computer hardware, innovation, digital world, mathematics for computing, business applications, enterprise computer systems, digital innovation, data analysis, and programming. So a lot of those are kind of the frameworks and the basics for doing more advanced things in later years for bigger projects. As you can see there, it's also kind of half business and half computing with math sprinkled in. Then year two, just database management, quantitative analysis for business decisions, enterprise information systems, business systems analysis, programming, developing internet applications, systems configuration and professional practice, which again, a mix of both business and programming with some overlap between data science and computing. And then in year three, there's business information management, IT architecture, user interface design, software testing, programming there again, and project management. Then you have intra, which is six month paid work experience. So it's from January until the end of July. Then in year four, uh, there's a non-contributing module and search technologies, enterprise architecture, innovation and entrepreneurship, software engineering, internet of things, cloud computing, and then the final team project, which is your big year four project. But here are just some of the career prospects. So the likes of business and business analyst, risk consultant, product owner, software engineer, technical support, and many more. Again, you can see there's a large kind of overlap uh, with computer science there. Now we're going to talk about my course, data science. So the year one core module there here. So it has computer systems, computer programming one and two, data science and databases, introduction to OR, and they're kind of all the computing modules that you do in first year. A lot of kind of the basics there, mostly using Python and OR. Then linear maths one, linear maths two, probability one, and calculus as applications. So as you can see there, it's kind of half maths, half computing. Same then would be again for year two. Um, again, you can see here it's kind of half maths, half computing. So you have developing internet apps programming three and four, data warehousing and OLAP, introduction to machine learning, data processing and visualization, and programming for data analysis, which again uses similar um, programming languages, Python and OR there again. Um, it'll also be using Java in programming four. And then calculus uh, kind of grows on what you did in first year in calculus. Same again then with statistics one and two, kind of develops on what you did in probability in year one. A lot of these maths modules have a large overlap with um, accounting and finance 
and the actuarial math students. Then in year three, there's no more math modules. Um, however, math is incorporated into the modules themselves. So there's data exploration, exploration using graph theory, which uses Cypher for that. Application domains one, um, software engineering, building better software, professional and research practice for data science and search technologies. And then there's Indra, which we have for eight months. So from January 8th to the 30th of August. Then in year four, there's advanced machine learning, application domains two, a final year project, data at speed and scale, natural language technologies, building complex computational modules and application domains three. And as you can see there again, there's a final year project, um, which is common there across all three computing courses. So here's just an example of the first year timetable. In the first semester, it's a little bit heavier um, as there's kind of, there's a lot of modules to do. There's a lot of time in tutorials and um, getting used to maths, a lot of lab work in person, because they really want you to get the fundamentals down. Then in fourth year, where you have more experience, um, you're in, you have a lot less face-to-face -face time with your tutors and lecturers. Um, then here's just some examples of projects, Shane, if you'd like to talk about these. Yeah, so you take on two projects um, during your time here. Uh, you have a third year project, which is the same concept as you start leading, sir. You get a bit of practice in, it's not as weighted heavily. Um, it kind of teaches you how to work around it and kind of what the conditions are going to be like. And then in fourth year, you go and you do a big project. Um, the projects are entirely up to you. Um, you get to choose your concept, how you do it, what you use to do it. And some of the examples there are the smart parking management system and the vehicle test, uh, personalized vocal trainer, carbon emission trackers, allergy scanners. And you do this in a pair. So it's you and one other person and you have to work together and you essentially make this big project and a lot of them tend to be really actually useful and a big part of it is that you just have the freedom to do absolutely anything you'd like and it lets you express your interests in the course and kind of lets you get into more of the niche of kind of what you want to do as a job after it gives you experience and all things like that now we're going to quickly talk about erasmus so there's an opportunity to study a semester abroad across all three of the computing courses. So Computing for Business and Data Science students have the option of studying in Lucerne in Switzerland. Um, I believe Computing for Business, depending on the year, um, have various different options of studying similar to computer science. However, currently Data Science only has the option of going to Lucerne, as this year was the first year um, that we took place uh, the Erasmus took place for data science. Um, then computer science have the option of studying in Austria, Switzerland, Paris, Lyon, and Sweden. It takes place the first semester of third year. This again is subject to change, like the points, um, just depends on the deals the, that DCU have with other universities. And um, for instance, some of the computing for business students this year uh, had the opportunity to study in Michigan. And um, then now we're just going to talk about INTRA. So INTRA stands for Integrated Training. It's a minimum of six months for all computing courses. Um, however, for myself and data science, it is a little bit longer. Roughly, it's from the 8th of January until the 30th of August, but it's a month less for computer science and computing for business. You get the ability to get hands-on experience. You get to see what it'd be like um, to work as a data scientist, to work as a software engineer, to work as a computer scientist, to work as a risk analyst, um, just see what that would be like. And then it's also a chance to network and build relations. You can see there as well, you have a statistic, 40% of students who go on an intra placement are offered a job after graduation. This is much, much higher for computing courses. Um, so on the right there is just an example of some of the companies that computing students go to, such as MasterCard, PwC, Aviva, AIG, and many more like Arista Networks, Workday, Amazon. I myself now am at PwC. And um, it's just a really great opportunity to kind of get an experience of what it would be like to work in the real world. Um, yes, yeah, Shane, do you just want to answer some of these questions? 
Yeah, no problem. So here are some very, very frequently asked questions about um, computing courses. Um, do you need to be good at maths? Um, you don't necessarily need to be a maths genius. Um, the minimum qualifications for the courses are there for a reason. If you can pass them, you're sure to be able to learn the maths that you're doing. Um, maths is uh, far more important in data science than it would be for um, the other courses. Um, the level of maths in computing for business would be the lowest out of the three. And then computer science would hit that middle ground. And then data science is a high level of maths. Um, so do I need to know programming beforehand? Um, no, you don't. I myself actually walked into this course never having owned a computer. And I've been doing just grand. Um, do we do game design? Um, as a college, we don't approach game design. Um, but if you do want to do something in regards to game design for your third or fourth year project, and even with your work placement, um, there's plenty of companies out there, and I'm sure there's, there's plenty of programs, and there's a lot of resources available to students um, to get into game design. Um, what's the difference between electrical and computer engineering and computer science? Um, this is a very, very frequently asked question. Um, so in engineering, you're focused more on the hardware side of things. Um, so they do stuff like working with circuits and electrical signals and everything along them lines. Whereas in computer science, uh, you're focused a lot more on software and actually interacting with the computer uh, from keyboard and mouse. Um, are the courses hard? Um, they're in the middle ground. I don't think they're the hardest courses out there, but they're most certainly not the easiest either. Um, if you put the work in, um, you'll have no trouble at all. Um, yeah, I think just to, sorry Shane, I just wanted to say, I think I skipped over the data science requirements slide. Um, as of last year, the requirement was 501 points. And then, yeah, just on your note about the maths, it is a minimum requirement of a H3 in maths. Um, as the math is quite difficult, we are in with the actuaries. Um, so the requirement does end up being quite high. Um, I see questions in the chat there. Um, the level of maths, um, which I had just gone over in the frequently asked. Um, and then how many people apply to computer science every year? I'm not too sure of the total number of applicants, but in my first year, we started with between 170 and 100, 180 people. So the course is... If anyone else has any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer. I think it's probably also worth mentioning that the per year project is exclusive to um, computer science, where, as Shane said before, it's almost kind of like a trial run for your fourth year project. Um, computing for business and data science don't have um, as large of a third year project. You can just do projects kind of per module. And um, there's no kind of one to the same extent. Actually, something I did forget to mention was the languages that we work with in computer science. And um, so in computer science, you start your first year with uh, Python, and then you also do web design with HTML and CSS. Um, and then it's in your second year that things start to get quite varied. Um, and sorry, in first year, you do shell programming as well, which is slightly programming language. Um, and then second year, uh, we touch on C, we do OR, um, Java, you do more Python, and that's where things get more varied, uh, and Prolog, which is fantastic. Um, and then in third year, uh, you continue on with some of these modules and languages, and then it's in your project that you get the, the choice of what language you'd like to implement your project in, and it's in fourth year, it's just the same. You have uh, complete choice and freedom in what languages you'd like, you'd like to use. If anyone else has any more questions, just stick it there into the chat. Shane and myself will be here until um, the next session, which would be at about half six, I believe. And so I'll stop sharing my screen now. Um, but we will still be here, so if you have any last minute questions, just pop them in and we'll answer them.
just answered the um, question in the chat there. Um, uh, would I recommend computer science to someone who does ordinary level maths? Um, at the end of the day, if you're willing to put in the effort to learn the maths that's on the course, you'll of course be able. The resources are there and the lecturers are always fantastic. Um, in ordinary level maths, because the maths that we do in college is quite different, you can definitely do ordinary level maths and get through to the course if you're really interested in it. As well, just there for the maths in the library, there's a free service called the Maths Learning Centre. That's basically where other students usually, they're typically uh, master's students or students who are in kind of fourth year who are very proficient at maths. Um, help students with their you know with tutorials or any maths topic that they may be struggling with and um it's all completely free so i know myself and many of my other classmates made great use of the the mlc it's a really kind of great resource to have <laughs>